Listen to the radio. Harry and Edna's wanna show you heard it from the three bells. Otto, and welcome to Harry and Edna on the wireless. And you might be able to tell by all this background noise, I'm indeed on a train. And I'm on a train because I'm going to Bedford for perhaps the most important coffee of my life. What ho! So why is young Harry on a train? Well, I'm going to Bedford to a Macmillan coffee. Well, they call them coffee mornings, and if I'm brutally honest, this is now early, um, early evening. And indeed... Um, this is the, the, the coffee morning. It's probably going to go on late into the night. And this is because it's a vinyl party. It's all based around that sort of the 1970s, 1980s um, rock and roll, maybe a teensy bit of punk, a bit of retro music. Now, fear not, chums. I'm not going to play any of that sort of music. I'm not Harry Nolan the Wireless. We're a vintage show, not a retro show. But uh, it's such an important event, raising money for such a cracking charity. Well... We just had to go along. What ho! Now, just before I go into the party, it's just time for me to say this is Harry and Edna on the wireless. And we're coming to you by internet streaming, F- FM, internet radio, and podcast. And if you want to find out more about the show and how to hear it and all the different ways you can enjoy it, because you can download it as a podcast, in fact, there's a hundred and more ways to listen to Harry and Edna on the wireless. Simply go to harryandedna.co.uk and click on the tab that says wireless and you'll see not only this show but all the previous back catalogue for you to enjoy over and over again. Anyway, next time you hear me, I'm literally be off the train and then I'm going to skedaddle quickly over to this uh, amazing coffee event. What ho! What ho! This is Charlotte White from Restoration Cake. I'm here at 44 Harper Street, the business parlour, organising the world's biggest coffee morning for Macmillan Cancer Support in the afternoon. That's what I was going to say. This is not the morning. Um, Is that because we just like to drink our coffee over a long period of time? Well, I'm not a fan of coffee. That's what's <laughs> that's what sort of sparked the idea. And I originally thought about doing maybe an afternoon tea, but then when earlier this year we sadly lost David Bowie, I thought we've got to honour him in some way. So we're throwing a vinyl party. So that leads on nicely. So what actually is the Macmillan ethos? Well, the idea is that Macmillan Cancer Support are a fantastic charity here in the UK and they provide support not only for patients who are dealing with cancer, um, they also support the families and the friends and they've started even offering support for patients who've survived cancer and they're now getting back to work and Macmillan can really help them. The Macmillan nurses are traditionally um, called in for patients who have terminal cancer and they care for them and look after them and counsel them. They're, they're a wonderful, wonderful charity and we're trying to raise money for them because they're not government funded. And this is a national charity and these coffee events all across the country is that right that's right so the macmillan coffee morning appeal started just over 25 years ago with one lady who got her friends together and suggested that they all bring a cake and they all have cups of tea and put money in the pot for macmillan that's grown over 25 years to what we now call the world's biggest coffee morning and everyone in the uk will be so aware of this because it's very well publicized all offices will be having uh, baking events and bake-off competitions and these little events are springing up all over it's nice to be able to put my own spin on it though um, and this does, does fit in, in, in rather well because you've got a bit of history here, haven't you? This is not your first Macmillan you've done. It's not. I've I've worked with Macmillan for a few years now. Sadly, um, my grandfather passed in 2010 and the Macmillan nurses were fantastic towards the end of his life, really spending time with him and, and he, he really, really loved them and they, they were wonderful. So I want to raise as much money to help other families and other people as I possibly can. So for the last few years, I've been involved 
with Macmillan as as an organisation. And a couple of years ago, I even baked a chocolate cake for Stephen Fry for a Macmillan event. And it's the one time I've been really, really starstruck. <laughs> what ho? Now, we've, you've been involved with this. There's going to be a bit of a twist going on to this coffee afternoon. Um, this isn't just a bit of tea and cake and um, being served on a on a bit of bell. You've got you've got a whole theme going on here. We have. So I make no secret of the fact that I'm a huge David Bowie fan. I have been for many years, and obviously losing him this year was horrible. So I've I've done this really in his honour. Um, so the idea of a vinyl party came from my friends and I. We've we've had a few evenings over the last over the last few months where we've got together and shared records and and listened to music and things you wouldn't necessarily perhaps have at home. So I thought, well, let's have a vinyl party. Let's share music because it's so important to so many of us and um, and just really celebrate and raise lots of money. Now. You're talking about vinyl. Now, obviously, the vinyl was the music media of a few years ago, and then CDs came along, they've died away, and then it was downloadable, and now it's streaming. Is there plenty of vinyl out and about for people to bring, or are you having to rummage through all the charity shops to try and find something? It's amazing. We've got so much vinyl. I mean, I have a huge collection at home. My husband has a huge collection at home. Lots of our friends do play records and we do have records and people have started buying new release records, which is great. But we've actually got here, I've got probably about 30 brand new records all shrink wrapped which we're giving away in our rock and roll tombola because the music industry have generously donated so many records which we're we're going to be raising money by giving them away you see this is a bit sad for me because that's when i'm feeling my age because not only do i remember you know david bowie in the 70s and i remember records very well and indeed rock and roll but this is getting to be quite a a good few years ago, I used the word retro because I just can't cope with the word vintage on there. So, although you may have the records, have people actually got the, the, the record players to play them on? Because I've got CDs, but I haven't got a CD player. <laughs> it's really funny you say that. I mean, there are there are allegedly out there some young people who are buying records because they think they're cool and they like the artwork and they like the the kitsch of owning a record but have nothing to play them on I'm sure that those people will eventually crack and when it comes to Christmas I actually think the little individual like an old dance set the the individual record players I think this Christmas top tip I think they're going to be flying off the shelves but you know we've we've got a 1960s radiogram that we can play we can play records or we can play new records, we can play old records, we can even play 78s on it because it's right from that term where things changed. So I think people are still playing and, and appreciating music in this way. So what, So we've got our, everybody's having a bit of a party next door, we sneak to a back room. So what are, what are they playing on? <laughs> what are they playing on? They're playing on the wonderful Jez Brown's um, portable record player. He's very generously brought it down, but he did warn me today. He said, bear in mind, it's an old player. It can't cope with the new heavy vinyl. It can only cope with that kind of older vinyl record, which you could pretty much bend into a fruit bowl if you wanted to. <laughs> this this mine is so... Uh... Well, I see a two penny pence on top of the, the, the stylus to hold it down now. You've got to be of a certain age to understand that. Yeah. <laughs> now, it's not just the music also. How else have you themed? Because I did spot something on the, on, on the video the other day. Yes, there is. <laughs> I made some cookies in the shape of lightning bolts, um, again, in honour of David Bowie and the Aladdin Sane makeup. But then I had, I'm, I'm a little bit discombobulated, Harry, at this point in time. My kitchen has been ripped out. My kitchen is now being refitted. And I was icing these cookies and I realised that I'd put the blue on the right when it should have been on the left and the red the other way round. And I, I had a moment and thought I was going to throw out four dozen cookies until I pulled myself together and thought, no, no, it's fine. They'll taste great. <laughs> Can you not just turn them around? <laughs> you have to look at them through a mirror. If you look at them in a mirror, they're fine. <laughs> what ho? Now, while the track was playing, I was learning about the advantages of vinyl, and partly because of my love of shellac. With vinyl, you no longer crush the Beatles to get the um, 
to get to get the, the, this, the, the, these discs of, of, of music. But you, were, you and but vinyl, is, it, I know it impresses my children a lot. The fact that you buy a record and you get two tracks, where they're not used to this. I mean, what is the what is the real benefit of vinyl? I think the listening experience is different with vinyl, and you know, I'll, I'm I'm in no under no illusions that that it's it's necessarily better it's just different it's a different experience so while i have my my spotify premium account and i stream to my phone and i can listen to any song that i want to right now um, other than taylor swift obviously um with vinyl you put a record on and you sit down and you listen to it start to finish you know you listen to the whole side i my my player my my radiogram has valve speakers and it plays both mono and stereo so you get a completely different um, sound experience listening in this way. And I went to a charity shop and picked up Avalon by Roxy Music for a pound. Bargain. Great. I'll have that. Took it home, put it on. I've listened to that album a million times, I'm sure. But the experience of hearing that was so different. It really, it, it just went right through my stomach. It was incredible. You were talking earlier about David Bowie and how you made the lightning bolts. Now I saw that, that that was a little like YouTube clip or something about that. How do you get the lightning bolt? Do you have like because I don't suppose you can get a, a cutter that's in that shape, and surely you didn't freehand a hundred biscuits. Do you know what this time? When earlier in the year I did a I did an event where I made cupcakes with little fondant um, <laughs> fondant lightning bolts on. I, I did tell you I'm a fan. I'm a crazy fan. So with those ones because they were quite small, I did hand cut them um and to cut something like a lightning bolt it's not it's not too taxing it's, it's a basic shape but for the cookies today i i do have a, a lightning bolt cookie cutter which i invested in and it was delivered to me from turkey so it's come all, all the way from turkey and yeah you can get lightning bolt um <laughs> cookie cutters and, and the the video shows how do you get the color right to the edges and i was quite impressed with that because i'm having decorated many a cake and put a splodge here and there so for those who haven't been fortunate enough to go and see the video how how do you do it what was the tip what, what, come on, what's the tips and <laughs> tips and hints here okay so the the kind of cookies that i've made have royal icing on them which is icing sugar and egg white essentially what you need to do is you need to have two different consistencies and the technique is known as flooding so you start off with one slightly thicker consistency and you use that to pipe if you like a floodgate so you pipe round the edges and that will hold in the rest of the icing so your second type of icing is what we call seven second icing and that's so runny that when you take a spoon out you can count to seven and it will be completely flat again so you take that runny icing and pour it over the top of your cookie and the little floodgate that you've already piped holds all of the color in there so it's not going to drip all out over the edges there is a video on my website and i'm making heart-shaped cookies using that same technique so you can watch it watch it happen in in real time what ho now you've been on the show before because you have this a business called restoration cake which is all about baking and you've also said you're doing this event while having your kitchen refurbed what made was that just bad timing or was it just you just don't need a kitchen to bake it was terrible timing. It was absolutely appalling. So, of course, this particular event, the world's biggest coffee morning, is always the last Friday of September. Every year, that doesn't change. But um, when I decided to get my kitchen done and they called up and said, yes, this is the date that we're going to come round, which I believe was earlier this week, you've got to take the date. So thankfully, my mother only lives 15 minutes down the road. So I've done all of the baking for today in my mother's kitchen. So thanks, mum. <laughs> and, and of course, we, we should explain, you've been on previous shows, and if you look through the back catalogue here, but you're, also, you're not just a baker. But you've been on previous shows, and you're not just a baker, but you also have done, you've been an author. You're, done, you're, you're on your third book now? Are you writing now? Oh, I couldn't possibly say. <laughs> There's definitely two, because yes. there's two on our two, two on our shelves. So I know there's, there's definitely been two, two books, and you now seem to be a prolific blogger. So how do so to, you're saying about to find out how you did the cakes and the hearts? You can go to your website. So so where is the website? Where do we go find out about 
Charlotte White and Restoration Cake. So you go to restorationcake.com. Earlier this year, I had my whole website rejigged because, yes, I've got two books on, on your shelf mm-hmm. and I've just had a brilliant idea for a third, so I'm desperate to sit down and start writing again. Um, but in the meantime, I blog about where I'm going and what I'm doing because I do a lot of a lot of events. I do a lot of food festivals and a lot of shows. But I can also sit and write down recipes. So I've got a whole section on there and it's all my recipes that I love and I'll put more on there as I as I come up with them. And you can have them, they're free. Help yourself. I, I just want to get everybody baking and decorating and um, and just entertain people. And indeed, the last time I saw you, I think you were at Goodwood and you were in a revolving kitchen, which was a bit bit more unusual. So that wasn't available. You had to go to your mum's. <laughs> oh, no, I couldn't get... If I could have had the revolving Kenwood kitchen, that would have been brilliant. So, yeah, if anyone was at Goodwood, I was there all weekend baking, especially on the Saturday when it rained so hard. We'd have all these soggy people standing at the door and I'd be calling them in, come, come in, sit down, I've got free cake, I'll warm you up. <laughs> and So where do we find you? What is the website? Where do people go to? So head to restorationcake.com. You can find me on all social media as well. So I'm at Restoration Cake on Twitter, Instagram and Facebook as well. Now who's going to rejoin your party? So what records are you going to be taking down? Well, aside from the obvious David Bowie, I've got um, some Roxy Music, some T-Rex, Lou Reed and the soundtrack to Some Like It Hot. What ho! Well, I've had to leave the vinyl party. It's going to go on much later, but I had to get the final train home. And I'm actually now travelling, believe it or not, on the Marston Rail Line. This is the, the train line that's taken me back to the 1940s postal district. And what is cracking about this, you know, we've had them on the radio show, the people that run the line. Yes, if you go to harrynedna.co.uk and click on the tab that says wireless, you'll see... Um, information about the radio show we do how we never the wireless and also how to listen to the show you know we're available by internet streaming podcast fm and internet radio and all the people and there was a listing of all the previous radio shows we've done scroll through those and there is an awful lot there and there's one about marston Vale line because this train line has an awful lot of history and i'm not just talking about the 1980s rolling stock i seem to be sitting on at this precise moment Right, well, I've had to leave the final party. Um, I'm really chuffed to say they also had a charity tombola stroke auction there and there were some amazing um, records from quite a few rarities and, 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 and ticket venues, events or venues to events, all being donated to raise money for Macmillan Cancer, including young Edna and I. You may know we do the Edna's Vintage Nightclub here in Milton Keynes and we've got a festive one coming up for Christmas, which is not until the 10th of December, and it'll be held at the world-famous Stables Theatre in Milton Keynes. But we um, donated some tickets for this because we do feel passionately, young Edna and I, about um, cancer charities, and it's great. And we anyway, hope you... I, I hope that whoever is the lucky winner of those uh, Headness tickets will enjoy themselves. And, you know, you can still join us. There are a few tickets left to go. If you want to know more information about uh, Headness Night, it's quite simple. It's harryandedna.co.uk. And there's an option there that says Headness. Click on that and you'll find out all that you need to know. What ho! Well, it's almost time for my station. and the, the train is really struggling to get up the hill to the 1940s postal district. So it's just time for me to say... Toodle pip. I hope you enjoyed the show about the, uh, the vinyl party. It was very different for us. We don't normally feature the sort of the 70s and 80s retro scene, but Edna and I, so we, we feel strongly about um, supporting cancer charities. We just had to uh, come along, and I hope you enjoyed it and listened and get an appreciation of how people are able to fuse together their passion for vintage and retro with doing some amazing great work. So it's just time for me to say, do the bit.